Hey, how's it going? I'm Ben Lindell. And today I'm going to be showing you how I name, organize, and color code every single session that I work on. Now sometimes you open up sessions with 100 plus tracks and there's, nothing's named, there's no colors, just stuff is all over the place. It can be complete chaos, which as you can tell makes me pretty angry. Uh, now whether you're the engineer, producer, or the client, you can save everybody a lot of time and money, look more professional, and keep everybody's sanity just by doing a few things I'm going to show you today. So let's get started. Speaking of chaos, this is what about 95% of the sessions that I receive look like. Uh, as you can see, they record a lot of instruments called Audio 14 and Audio 22. Uh, not very descriptive, are they? Uh, I'm pretty sure somewhere in here there's some drums, bass, guitar, keyboards. I just have no idea where they are. Uh, so to fix the situation, I'm going to have to go through and listen to each one of these tracks in solo and give them a better name. So let's start off with Audio 14. All right, that sounds like a distorted bass. Next track. Sounds like an organ. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty painful process, and we have about 50 tracks in a session. So we're going to fast forward and save you some misery. All right, so that happened. Now all my tracks have appropriate and descriptive names, and I know what I'm dealing with. Uh, but now my routing and effect sends are still kind of unclear. They say things like bus 1-2, bus 5-6, and I have no idea where they're going. Uh, so to fix this, I could go to Setup, I.O., and rename them here. Except the problem is I have no idea which is which. So I'm going to show you the way I like to rename my buses. So I come down here to my drum subgroup, and I right-click on bus 1-2, click Rename, and name it Drums. Go to my guitar subgroup, right-click, Rename, Guitars. You get the idea. All right, so now all my tracks and buses are named, and the chaos is slowly shrinking, so I'm going to start moving tracks around in a way that makes sense to me so I can easily find things as I'm working. So, for instance, I like to put all the drums at the top of my session, followed by any percussion or loops, followed by the bass, guitar, keyboards, synths, and then I put the lead vocal, background vocals, and finally, any aux returns. This is the layout that I do on every single session. Now, you don't have to do it exactly like me, but you should find a layout that makes sense to you so you can remember to do it consistently. When you use the same layout on all your sessions, you're going to find that you save a lot of time, and believe me, it'll make your life a lot easier. So now that our tracks are laid out in a more logical order, let's throw some color on them. In a big session, even though it's well organized, it can still be difficult to find your lead vocal or bass track. So if you throw some color on them that's distinct, it can be a lot easier to spot them when you're scrolling around. The easiest way I know how to do it is to double click on the color bar either at the bottom or the top of the track. This brings up the color palette, which allows you to paint your session and express yourself as an artist. Now at the top of the color palette, there's a couple options. There's this button which turns on and off the colors for the whole track. You have your saturation and you have brightness. For me, I prefer to have my drums dark brown, my percussion in light brown, my bass in red, synth bass in like a reddish pink. Now each guitar, I like to give a little bit different shade of blue. So that way it's easier to see which ones are which. Keyboards and synthesizers in pink and purple Now this track is, is a little unique in that it has lots of different lead vocals. So I'm going to color all of my lead vocals red and all my background vocals orange. And finally, I like to color all of my subgroups yellow and my aux returns green, which happens to also be the default in Pro Tools. And voila, all my tracks are named, organized, and colored in a way that's familiar to me, and now I feel very comfortable with this session. Let's get back over to the edit window. As you can see, all my track colors carried over here, but over in the main part of my edit window, all the regions are just colored whatever. Pro Tools actually has a great option. If you go to Setup, Preferences, down here in the default region color coding, you can select Track Color, and watch this. 
Voila. Now all my regions are color coded the exact same way as my tracks, and it's even easier to see where I am. I can obviously tell this is my bass, my lead vocals, background vocals, drums, percussion. This is fabulous. All right, so now we know where things are in our session, but we don't know when things are. So I'm going to go through and add markers for each section of the song, so that way later on when the producer asks me, hey, can you skip forward to the second chorus? I know exactly where that is. So to do this on Pro Tools, uh, on a Mac you press Control and you click on the marker line, or if you're on Windows, it's Start Click. I always start at the top of the song and work my way down. Call it Top. And I'm going to go through. First verse, first chorus, second verse, second chorus, instrumental bridge, breakdown, and last chorus. That's it. We renamed our tracks and our buses. We organized them in a way that makes sense. We color-coded our tracks and our regions, and we put down markers throughout the whole song. Now, this is a great habit to get into, and it's really going to save you a lot of time and just make your life a lot easier in the long run. Now, even though our song may not sound any better yet, it sure looks a lot better. So, uh, until next time.